It's a good oh answer. Oh my god, we just lost listeners. It's a good they answer. They actually threw Rotten Tomatoes at like at the screen? wherever they're listening to it. Like they're dash if they're in the car, like oh, they're man. it's covered with Rotten Tomatoes right now. Oh gosh. <sighs> I'm gonna get some letters. All right, what is up, everybody? We are gathered here today, and by we, myself and Mr. Ryan Muckenhern, who sits across from me, to answer a question, to uh, to make a decision, and, and if you uh, make a choice, Ryan, if you know anything about me in 200-some-odd episodes of the podcast here, uh, indecisive hate making decisions, and also have a million caveats to each decision that I possibly make and then flip-flop at the end of it anyway. The question at hand, what is the best whitetail cartridge? The best whitetail cartridge. So, Ryan, we got, we got to look at this in a silo of whitetail hunting. I would say in its... Uh, Across the spectrum of whitetail hunting, which it varies, you know, from region to region, but I'd say also primarily thinking of, I, I guess, you know, from a distance perspective, the common distances in which you will encounter or have to take a shot at a whitetail. Now, I'll, uh, I'm already thinking of exceptions to the rule. There are things like cow's deer. Yes. There are... Western whitetails, the Dakotas, things like this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Where, you know, at first glance, you're like, oh, I don't need a, you know, a quotation mark long-range cartridge, right? Um, but maybe you do. It's possible. I, uh, all right. So, I don't want to, uh, I also don't want to, uh, what, a spoiler alert or, like, you give, like, the conclusion and then nobody has a reason to listen, but hopefully we have enough why behind our reasons for picking are, in our opinion, the best whitetail cartridge, quotation mark. I think we should uh, say it at the same time. I think we should, like, one, two, three, and then yeah, we say it. It's like one, two, three, shoot, or one, two, shoot. Okay. Like one, two, three, blank. Okay. Blanks Which, are a very ineffective whitetail cartridge. Yeah, you don't want to shoot blanks. Nope. Um, also, this is also what Ryan and I just did here. That's probably a good exercise to figure out if you guys are, if you're ever in a hunting scenario where you're trying to, uh, you have two opportunities that have pre presented themselves simultaneously, yep. and yep. you're trying to take advantage of uh, doubling up. Now, I've got my opinions on that, though. I don't really like the one, two, three, and then, because I feel like it makes you... Uh, not make, make not make a good trigger press. You know what I like to do? I would wait. I I will on the gun. I will wait for the report of the gun and then send. Right. Boom. Now you run the risk though. Of uh, but if you send it fast enough though, it ought to get there before anything bad happens. For yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's an exercise you practice with your hunting partner. You see the one, two, three work sometimes, though. Sometimes. Sometimes not, though. I've done some one, two, threes on some, some jump shoots on waterfall. One, two, three, go. That makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. Also, it depends on um, the person in the heat of the moment because three might actually happen on one. <laughs> all right. See that. One, bang. Yep. See that. This is all, uh, what do we say? I digress. Did we digress? It's because I don't want to make a decision, Ryan. I don't want to say what I'm going to say. Mark? What I was flip-flopping on my way here. I'm going to tell you something about this. It doesn't matter what we say. <laughs> whatever we say, whatever conclusion we come to, is not the correct answer somewhere. Admittedly, yeah. there are a lot of really good answers. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. A little Minnesota coming oh, out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I catch myself quite a bit now with uh you little scanny in you yeah and it comes out oh yeah i drop that <laughs> quite a bit now um okay so one here we go okay are you doing the countdown i'll do the countdown okay oh god 
whenever you're ready, Mark. One, two, three, thirty six, five, six. Three more. You're such a fool. <laughs> <laughs> You just ruined it. <laughs> oh, God. Right now. I'm somebody, blushing. Somebody, I'm embarrassed. I know. I'm embarrassed for you. <sighs> Can I change my answer? Nope. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for turning, tuning into this episode of the Vortex oh Nation podcast gosh. in which Mark states definitively his position on center fire rifle cartridges for <laughs> white tails. That's right. The 6-5 Creedmoor. <clears throat> Mark, I can just, like, people... It's a good oh answer. Oh my god, we just lost listeners. It's a good they answer. They actually threw rotten tomatoes at like at the screen? wherever they're listening to it. Like they're dash if they're in the car, like oh, they're man. it's covered with rotten tomatoes right now. Oh gosh. <sighs> I'm going to get some letters. I uh, It's not a bad answer. Let's unpack it a little. Okay. Will you do yours first and then I'll do mine second? Yes. Okay. So, can I make one more caveat? Yeah. I think that Mark's answer is a good answer. Thank you. Here's why. It's in my whitetail hunting history, Ryan, which I guess can re- I, I can really say that starts when I got to Nebraska. Now, when I got to Nebraska, the six five Creedmoor wasn't even a thing yet, right? No. So, you know, relatively still new cartridge, uh, not as new as it once can, was. Can though. I ask what what year it was that you landed on the shores of Nebraska? Yeah. Ooh, gosh, I think that would have been. Uh, Oh, two. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're predating the Creedmoor by a good yeah. half decade. Um, Here's what I'll say about the Creedmoor. It, it used to be not as common, right? Like, when I first bought my first 6.5 Creedmoor, which I've owned a couple over the years, mm-hmm. I still actually have that first one, it was like a new thing. Like, it was in the, it, it was, you know, kind of debuted in the, you know, the Target PRS world, yeah. long-range precision type stuff. And then was begin, you know, a lot of people were talking about it. Ooh, it's a new magic cartridge, right? Now, now, well, I'll also caveat before people really start hitting me. I don't think that the six five Creedmoor is made out of unicorn dust. What? I don't believe it's. I don't believe it's Thor's hammer. I don't believe. You, you know what I mean? Like it has limitations. Sure. Right. But anyway, but it's also got a lot of positives yes. as well. Um, at the end of the day. Whitetails aren't the biggest animal on the planet, right? So uh, let me back up. Let me back up. Six five Creedmoor in the hunting world used to be not super common. Now I feel like it's very common. There's a wide enough uh, bullet palette with good bullets available uh, for hunting that a person is going to be fu- uh, be able to find something that shoots out of their rifle that's readily av- readily available and will suit their needs for their style of whitetail hunting. Uh, what I have here, I've been shooting lately out of my 6.5. What is this? This is the, uh, it's the uh, Federal Terminal Ascent 130 grainers, right? Mm-hmm. So let's mm-hmm. look at some numbers here real quick, Ryan. Uh, box posted. Okay, that's what we got here. Box posted. Uh, muzzle velocity of 2,800. That's pretty solid. It's right in the pocket. This is, this uh, bullet has a, uh, um, a high BC. Ryan, hmm. when we were talking about BCs earlier, you know, so it's, it's going to be an efficient bullet. It's going to pass through the air efficiently. I don't like to use the word fly. A lot of people say that the bullet flies. It's not flying. What's it doing? It's passing through the air. Oh, Does okay. it have wings? No. Is it creating lift? Well. It's, it's passing through the okay. air. Okay. Um, gosh, I used to know the BC of this. Uh, okay, yep. Uh, it's got a G1 of a 532. Hmm. Pretty damn good for a 130 grain bullet, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and like I said, this is one example. I like this example. Uh, I feel like it's gassed up pretty good for a 6.5 Creed. Um, 130 grain bullet is uh, plenty for a whitetail buck. Yep. Whitetail buck deer munching on clover. Um, and like I said, there, but there's there's a wide enough bullet palette. Is it as big as a 30 cal? No way, Jose. No way, right? But it's big enough to cover the white tail bracket, right? Uh, short action. Uh, you've got, uh, you know, it's going to be uh, mild, manageable recoil. Yep. If you break it, it's going to be even less. But what I would say to that, the nice thing about it is you don't have to break it and shoot it very comfortably in pretty much any rifle that you put it in. Yep. 
Um, because uh, of its, uh, you know, um, temperament. Uh, its temperament, and also because it is a good long-range cartridge, it is going to do better, in my opinion, at longer range than, say, like a 308 regarding wind drift. I'm talking wind drift, right? You get uh, what is a uh, variable that compounds over the, uh, here, I'm going I'm to contradict myself. I'm going to say time of flight, Ryan, uh, the wind, right? So that's going to be, you know, as you go further away, as your shots get longer, you know, the, the, the longer the bullets can be passing through the air, it's going to be more affected by the wind. The 6.5 does better than I, then I'll, com- I'll compare it to a 308 in in the wind, right? He's like, well, I'm hunting whitetails. Yeah, a lot of whitetail shots, 20, 30, 40, 50 yards. I mean, you get a lot of bow shots, right? You know, 100 yards could be a long shot depending on where you're at. Uh, the furthest I've killed a whitetail actually happened, it was in Wisconsin, Ryan. I think I've talked about this before, but 330 yards. Jeez. Shot him with the old 300 wisdom. How come you didn't use a 6.5 Creedmoor? Because that's, that's, because that's my rifle for everything. Yeah, okay. Not just whitetails. I don't have a just white tails rifle. Well, I guess I've got a 6.5 Creedmoor, so it could be a just white tails rifle. I just love the 300 wisdom though. Um, yeah, man. So in that, right, so where I was going with the distance, even though even here in Wisconsin, there's potential for, uh, I'd say most of your shots are going to be probably actually 100 yards and in. Sure. And definitely 300 yards and in. Sure. 6.5 Creed is going to handle all of that very handily. But you get a buck beyond 300 yards. Uh, case in point, I've probably talked about the scenario before. Before I started, you know, kind of learning the fundamentals, I'll say, of long range shooting. Uh, met some buddies. We we're getting ready to do a bunch of good old fashioned deer drives. They love to do deer drives. We're sitting there looking at this buck bedded in a cut cornfield with a doe. He's bedded probably mm, 400 yards away, I think, about 400 yards, right? Uh, I didn't have, you know, a dope card, all this, you know, just whatever, just thinking, oh, we're just going to do a bunch of deer drives all day. We surround the deer, you know, try to cover all the uh, escape routes. Somebody goes in, somebody shot, missed, buck gets away. Real nice buck. Nowadays, Ryan, you just laid down and killed it, which you also could do with a 308 or a 30-06 that you're talking about. So that's not going to change but this is a the uh, this is a, a, a mild mannered, just easy shooting, pleasant cartridge. It's a fine cartridge. That's that I think is going to do everything you need to do. And then you know you brought up coos deer, Ryan. Yep. Which you like to call them cows deer. I go back and forth. When I've been in Arizona, a lot of the guys just call them whitetails. They're not wrong. They're not wrong. No. Let's just call them those teeny deer that reside in the American Southwest. So. Obviously, big enough bullet to dig, to get done. Uh, I've uh, shot two coos deer in my life. Uh, the shortest shot, four hundred yards. Was it with a six five creepmore? No, that was with a three hundred wisdom. <laughs> and the other, and the, the other one? one was actually probably, I'd say, I can't remember what year that was. That was with a six XC. Mm. So an even smaller bullet than than this guy did did great did great so but anyway where i'm going with that you're going to i think oftentimes you are presented with a longer shot or can be in that country uh can be windy this is just going to do a great job it's just going to do it's good it's great it's, it'll kill every whitetail that you need to kill at whatever distance you need to kill a whitetail i'd say you know caveat i'm sure there's exceptions at any distance that i would intend to shoot at a whitetail it'll do the job just fine Yes. I, I Where have I gone wrong? Nowhere. I, I think it's a fine choice. I just, it, <clears throat> the, the hard part about this question is it's one of those questions that can't really be answered definitively. No. Like, um, you know, how's a rainbow made? <laughs> <laughs> they actually know. I mean, well, they think they know. They think they know. <clears throat> right. Um, and I think it's fine cartridge. I really do. And and I, I get a lot of folks, listeners will write in and they'll say, you know, hey, I'm thinking about doing this, that, or the other thing. I don't have a rifle or I'm looking at a new rifle. You know, what, what should I consider? Um, 
and especially if you're a newer shooter, um, and, and, and again, this probably doesn't necessarily apply to the shorter ranges that you might encounter a whitetail, like that bow distance market talked about. But if you're planning on some varied terrain, and you may be hunting here in the Midwest and taking a foray out west or into the southwest or wherever it is, that you might have a little bit more distance. Um, you know, honing those fundamentals of marksmanship, uh, you have to shoot the gun, period. Yes. And the gun that you can shoot the best is the most effective. And I, this is where I really do love the 6.5 Creedmoor because generally speaking, it's very affordable to shoot. It is very mild-mannered um, compared to, you know, larger cartridges. And you can you can develop efficacy faster with less time on the range with a cartridge like this. Um, everything else, you know, considered equal. Go ahead, Mark. I'm going to I'm going to give it a, a detractor. Oh, go though, on. Even though I was just you know touting the positives. Okay. Uh, I feel as though uh, although the uh, number and and uh, uh, what is the word selection uh, the selection of uh, rifles chambered in six five Creedmoor is um, very good. Yeah. Right, factory. I'm talking factory options yeah. here. It's yeah. very good. Yeah, it will. I I don't believe it matches like a, the 308 or the 30 odd six. You know, I bet we can put a pen to paper and find out if we go out at the. You think like stuff like uh, what were we were talking about, like uh, the 7600 the other day. Well, that probably you're not going to find a 65 Creed more. The Browning right. BAR, another fine rifle. Yeah, you're correct. In those two examples, perhaps, but I think I think we'd be surprised to see how many six five Creedmoors are chambered. It is, I believe, now the most popular centerfire cartridge for big game hunting. No, in, in purchases, yeah. Where'd you hear that? Are you f- sure? I, it was a figure I read. They had, and that was like globally. So it is a really good we're gonna cartridge. We're gonna have to look that yeah, up. Yeah, we're gonna we'll we'll do some Wikipedia fact checking. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. Continue. Um, yeah. So, like, I, I do, I do really enjoy the cartridge. In fact, I just, I just took it uh, out west. I just returned the other day from a pronghorn hunt, not a whitetail, but a pronghorn. Um, I used a six five Creedmoor, and uh, the results were spectacular. How far did you uh, shoot that buck at? Shade over three. Okay. Yep. It was three thirty four on the on the range finder. And what um what bullet did you? 120 grain Barnes tip triple shock. Hand loads? Hand loads. What are those? What's the muzzle velocity on those? 2,900. 29. Yeah. I got maybe 100 feet per second over here. Well, remarkable. But you've got 120 grainer though, too. That's true. Versus well, remarkable BC discrepancy between this. And this is a figure that I'm not obsessed with. I don't, I don't find myself necessarily concerned with ballistic coefficient um, so long as I have a robust projectile and. I can put payload on target. Mm-hmm. Um, it it's not a figure that affects much of how I shoot or where I shoot or when I shoot. Well, and I would say, knowing you, you generally limit the distances that you shoot. Yeah, at game. And and I I try to and actually with that. Where that, I'd say that does it becomes a moot, moot point. At that. Yeah, I mean that particular pronghorn. I had an opportunity at him at like a hundred yards, and uh, was, you know it was kind of one of those things where let's see how let's see how I get my gun off my sling. I have a sling that clips into my pack, mm-hmm. and so I had to do a little bit of finagling and then got it off and got into a, a hasty position on the shooting sticks. And my hunting partner called me a range, and then we were cutting pronghorn up shortly thereafter. But What's your, uh, what did you have your gun zeroed at? 50 yards. 50 yards. Five zero. Did you dial? I did. One point, I think it called for 1.2 mils, and I think I dialed 1.5 because he was kind of meandering, and then I held a bit of wind because it was kind of windy, Uh huh. and uh, well, it went exactly where it was supposed to. Where'd you hit him? Right behind the shoulder on one side, <laughs> and then right through the shoulder on the other. Uh, yeah. Did but, he, what was his reaction? Uh, instantaneous death. Good. Yeah. Fantastic. Everything you want. It was. Um, but I've, you know, I've made that exact same shot with a 308, with a 270 short mag, with a 30 out 6. Mm-hmm. Um, similar shot with a 243. I've seen that shot executed with 
two seven. Wow, well, did I say two seventy? Two seventy. I think so. Yeah. yeah. Um, until okay, I'm just going to talk about my cartridge selection. I just said a thing because I needed to say a thing. I don't actually have. There's this is a non-answer to this question. I think that any reasonable centerfire cartridge, 24 caliber or larger, and I'll put an asterisk behind that, um, with an appropriate bullet, and that I think is the most important part. Yes, is the best whitetail cartridge, and because of all the things that you had mentioned with the variability of whitetail in in both size and distance. Um, you know, you have to make that selection accordingly. If I was to have just a gun for the rest of forever, and I was only hunting deer, whitetail specifically, mm-hmm. but I was hunting them in all the places that whitetails exist, mm-hmm. in all the sizes that whitetails come in, I'd probably pick a 308 or a 30 odd six, maybe even a 300 Winchester or a 300 Wisdom. And, and not because that those are the required cartridges to kill it, but because of how I can have it loaded and what I can have it do when we start getting into, you know, taller distances and, and things like this. Um, but I've killed whitetails with 223 and very dead, um, 243, um, a smattering of 30 caliber options. I watched my hunting partner take the most spectacular shot I've ever seen on a whitetail using the lowly ancient 270 Winchester <gasps> with an aerodynamically horrible bullet. I mean, a 130 grain soft point. It was fine. <laughs> and uh, it was great white tail and it was, it was an unreal shot and it was fantastic. And, um, I think at the end of the day though, when, when we do these necropsies on these critters, it's the bullet construction that mm-hmm. makes the kill. My cousin, um, when we were younger and we would hunt in Northern Minnesota, he would shoot a uh, Winchester 94 and 30, 30, and he killed a number of deer. My uncle before him with that gun killed a number of deer. Another guy in our party, he had a um, uh, Remington 760 in 308. He killed deer. My father shot a 308. Um, I shot a not six. Um, I mean, again, I think that the bullet design and the bullet placement is really what, what, makes, what makes the gravy on that one. But I guess if I'm going to pick one, I'll pick the 30 out six. It's such a good choice. It is. It is. Um, I was I was flirting between because I was like I was trying to think. I mean, you know, I love thirty cals. Mm-hmm. I do. Like, um, yeah. I, if you made me pick one cartridge for everything, yeah. Then I'm personally going with the three hundred wisdom. And by everything you mean white tails or by everything? Everything, all okay. the things, yeah. right? But I'm like, I don't need like. Then I, I started thinking about no oh, recoil management and like, do I need all that and I, I don't nope. for whitetails. Nope. And I don't think you do for bigger things. It's probably more, I'm pointing at my head. Oh, yeah. There, a there, lot of it's upstairs. There's a big part right? of that. But, you know, to, to share another story and, and kind of another, um, you know, bag of chips on the uh, 6'5 Creedmoor's end of the poker table here, uh, a childhood friend, um, we grew up across the street from each other. He moved to North Dakota, um, was an archer through and through, and... Uh, back when we lived in Minnesota, he hunted with a slug gun. So, you know, Remington 1100, we're talking 50, 60 yard shots. Anyways, is what we were getting exposed to. And he drew an elk tag um, and in a hurry needed a rifle. Mm-hmm. And so he wrote me and, and we talked about it and, you know, limited experience with rifles. He was shooting ARs um, and maybe a Bolt 223. Um, I know his dad had a triple deuce for a long time. Uh, but but like very limited experience with rifles. Good shooter, but limited experience with rifles. And so we talked about different cartridges and, and like he was getting this for elk. This is something he's thinking he's going to do on a semi-frequent basis, you know, maybe not every year, but every other year or so. And then knowing that, you know, he's got kids that are coming up in age and, and um, wants to get them into the outdoors and, and um, he wants to, I guess, expand his experience in, in hunting, you know, whitetails, mule deer, pronghorn, elk, et cetera. Um, we had to find a cartridge. We had about four months to get this all buttoned up. And I think what I had come down to was the 6.5 Creedmoor or an Ot 6. And when looking at both of them together, it was like, okay, you have limited scope of use with a bolt-action rifle on a magnified rifle scope. Um, and you need to figure out how to shoot good to a, a distance. Um, we're, we're adding ballistics into this now. And, and you know, what's it going to do? And I said for the budget in mind 
for the shoulder and mind and, and to really crank up the efficacy um, with the, the platform in mind, get the 6.5, which was a light recommendation for elk, um, practice up with it and select a damn good bullet. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. he picked up a Tika in 6.5, mm-hmm. uh, put a modest rifle scope on it, and bought some pretty inexpensive target ammo and went out and started shooting um, pretty frequently, you know, figuring the gun out at 100 in the in the conventional ways and then moving himself out to two, three, four, five, and so on and so forth. Invested in a chronograph, um, figured out how to do a ballistics table and all that kind of thing, um, and then selected a really good projectile to pull this off. And then on his hunt, he had a, a cow elk. I think she was like 300-ish yards. Mm-hmm. And he put that really well-designed bullet exactly where it was supposed to go, and she folded like a $5 tent. Mm. And um, I think, I mean... I'm not saying that you couldn't have done the same thing with an Ot six or 300 Win Mag, but I really do believe that he got really good with the gun in a shorter amount of time because it didn't kick the tar out of him and it didn't drain his wallet in ammunition costs. Yeah, and and I, I think that's a huge thing to to consider um, when you're looking at that ideal cartridge. And and again, I'll, I'll harp back on this, and I, I really think that the bullet is the most important part, not necessarily the cartridge, but the bullet. Mm-hmm. Um, and a, and a, an appropriate selection of projectile is is paramount in order to dictate success. For sure, for sure. Par- particularly if you're going to take a cartridge like the six five and pursue, you know, game that's probably on the upper end, definitely suited for it. Yeah. But you know, on it on its upper end, also, I would not shoot an elk personally at distances that I would actually shoot a deer at mm-hmm. with with the six five feet more. Yeah. Yeah. Like um like I think four would be and and like and we're talking like, oh I think four would be my limit. That's a long shot. Forty miles short of a quarter mile or forty forty miles. Forty yards short of a quarter mile. Right. That's a long ways. It's lo- it's real long ways. Yep. Right. So like I think we we get we um Oh, what's the what's the word I'm looking for? Anyway, we we put a lot of thought into uh, a lot of these statistics and performance characteristics um, on the end of the spectrum that oftentimes doesn't matter. I think that's a huge thing, um, and I'm glad you brought it up. And I think that's why I keep talking about the right projectile. And and guilty as charged. Yeah. Um, that I used to be horsepower 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 when it came to cartridges my first rifle that i had kind of quote built for western hunting was a 300 weatherby because i thought that's what i needed to kill pronghorn and mule deer at, at distances that i thought i was going to engage him at like i was thinking seven eight hundred yards you know um the reality is it just doesn't exist uh or at least in my realm i, I don't encounter these shots with any degree of frequency um and as much shooting as i do i just simply wouldn't take them um what i found though is ryan i've uh, and and I can't claim that I came up with this, but I do subscribe to it. You'll never make an amazing shot unless you take an amazing shot. That could be. <laughs> <laughs> that could be. Um, no, but, the, you know, with that big gun, I thought I needed it. And I thought I needed the huge velocity and huge energy numbers. And um, I found out that it just, it's just really hard to shoot. And it's really hard to be good with. And it's really hard to be consistent with. And I found myself not trusting the rifle. In fact, it had nothing to do with the rifle. It was trusting my ability with the rifle. Mm-hmm. So what I've done over the past, I'm going to say eight years, ten years, is I've gotten smaller and smaller and smaller in cartridge um, for the same quarry. And, and actually, I believe I've gotten better and better and better and mm-hmm. more more effective and ethical mm-hmm. intake. Um, and, and so, you know, odd six, 308, 708, 25 odd six, 270, uh, 280, 280 Ackley, um, Six five Creedmoor, even two forty three. A lot of people still dog on that cartridge. Oh, it's a great cartridge. It is, and I was I was going to take a two forty three. The two forty three and the seven oh eight. I feel are and, and even more so the seven oh eight. Yeah, is, bad rap. Yeah, it's a phenomenal cartridge. Yeah, I feel like such a dunce for not having one. I I don't know that I'd fall in love with it, but I I know what it's capable of, and I look at the two eighty Remington, which I think is just a darling cartridge. And all it can do, and the 708 can can really kind of do everything that the 280 can. And if you if you're a hand loader, and you're real particular about the configuration of rifle and the projectile selection, you you can you can certainly get to some numbers that you would go whoa. 
it's out of the, the lowly seven millimeter weight. What a brilliant cartridge, though. Yeah. Um, but it does. It gets it gets a lot of heat, and for no reason. It just got brushed to the side. It did. It, it, it and so did two forty three. People say you know oh, it's a youth and ladies cartridge. Well, and so um, I bought one yeah. when uh, when I lived in Nebraska. Yep. I was like, oh, this would be a great uh, great deer rifle. I uh, brought it. I, I also it's the other thing is I bought it for coyotes too. Sure. You know, I was like, oh, let's be a great deer coyote gun. And it was a uh, it was a Winchester. It was like a compact wood stock. Mm-hmm. It was like really cool rifle. I sold it. Of course. Uh, and uh, yeah, people made fun of me for it though. I they took sh- some. I took some heat. They said, oh yeah, like like oh. You're, you know, like a like a ladies' youth cartridge, just like you said. People would say those things to me, right? And it hurt. And it shouldn't. I my plan was on this past hunt that I went on again, not a whitetail hunt. We're talking about cartridges for whitetail, and I keep coming back to pronghorn. Um, <clears throat> I brought that gun to the range. I bought that gun in like 2015 or 16, and I, I just simply haven't gotten around to firing it. And so I took it to the range. I had some factory loaded ammunition. Um, in, in some hundred grain soft points that I just wanted to kind of fire lap the barrel and get it kind of burnished in. And so I shot like, uh, 10, 15 rounds of those and let it cool down and switch to my, my hunting loads. Again, a Barnes bullet, 80 grain tip, triple shock. Um, an 80 grain. Yeah. Well, that would certainly never do it. Well, yeah, we'll talk a little bit about bullets maybe and we'll talk about grain weight and what differences it make. <laughs> but, um, and it shot fantastic, but my six, five just shot better. And and like, and like that's the race for which one is going to shoot the best. And so I have high confidence in both rifles. One of them just outperforms, um, and pr- probably an unfair test. You know, com- comparing the the two rifles, one's got a pretty seasoned bore and was set up. So one was the six five, and the other was two forty three. Two forty three. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so I look I look at that shot, and I was like, oh yeah, I could have taken that shot. You bet I could have, um, and it would have been fine. I'm certain that pronghorn would have been just as dead. And I'm certain that a whitetail would have been just as dead. But um, there again, you know, Mark Mark said 80 grain. I can't do it. Well, it's all that bullet again. That bullet. So what? What's better? What was the What was the 80 grain bullet in question? Uh, Barnes tip triple shot. Oh, it was. Okay, yeah. gotcha. Yeah. So gotcha. light light launch, but if you can recover one, generally the same weight or within a grain or so of of what it was fired at. I was being. I was. Um, you, it was. You're being facetious. I was being sarcastic. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But I see. But no, I. You know, maybe I. Maybe I should have done that. We would have had a different talking point, perhaps. By the nature of the twists and turns that this car, or that that this podcast has taken, just in terms of the fact that we can't stop talking about other cartridges. Yeah. That outside of what we, you know, yeah. I guess uh, made our decision again. Yeah. Air quotes. It just goes. I mean, there's a lot that are extremely well suited to the task at yes. hand, and also pick one that, um, like, we're picking one for all the regions. Yeah, right. Maybe some yeah. Will should be, we should some, we break it up? Some will be might be, but then again, though, like, I feel like this works in all the regions. It so could. maybe you're done. I mean, it could. But why, Ryan? If I was like, dude, I know, I know that my shots are gonna be like 300 and in, let's say, then I probably would pick a 308 because I could get like a wider, I could shoot a heavier bullet. Yep. Do I need a heavier bullet? No, I don't need a heavier bullet. But why do I want to pick the 308 then? This is the reason that there's options on the table because of our indecision. Remember the book, um, Benoit Bucks? Yeah. 35 Whalen in a Remington 760 or 7600. I don't know. I haven't read that book. Big, slow bullets. Right. You know, maybe the maybe the question is like, well, we should pick a rifle first. Well, we pick okay, you pick a region and the subspecies, and then you pick a rifle and then you pick a cartridge. Maybe that's how you do it. Okay. Okay. So like let's just say we're in the UP of Michigan or northern Wisconsin, northern Minnesota. Timber. Mm-hmm. Big timber. Limited shot distance opportunities. Occasionally they exist. Mm-hmm. I think my dad told me one time he the farthest he'd ever shot was 107 yards across a clear cut in in northwestern Minnesota where he used to hunt deer. 107 yards. He said it like he said it like 107 <laughs> yards. <laughs> um, 
You know, so if you if you have a, a, a limited window for guys, distance, guys are shooting deer with their bows that far now. I know it, right? I mean, that's crazy to think about. One hundred and seventy yards. But so if you wanted a a rifle that you could, if you were going to still hunt in the fashion of the Benoit, right? So you're looking for tracks in the snow and and you're you're following. You want something pretty portable, mm-hmm. probably something pretty handy. Mm-hmm. Probably going to be maneuvering through some underbrush. You know, maybe you got to stand a black spruce. You got to push through. Aspens, whatever, mm-hmm. something light, fast, but powerful enough. Mm-hmm. The, the first things that are coming to my mind when I think about that terrain would be the Winchester ninety four or Marlin three thirty six or any similar pattern rifle of, of a handy lever action, chambered in thirty thirty Winchester, thirty two Winchester, um, thirty five Remington. I, any of those slow moving but adequate cartridges for that 100-yard, 125-yard whitetail shot. You know, got, got a good frontal area on that bullet, enough mass to go through, hit you know, hit a deer in the right spot. It's going to pop out the other side. and Mass to go through just the deer? Yeah. Are you talking I'm about not a, I don't subscribe to the brush bust thing. I just, well, that's where I was going. Yeah, it's not. I, I thought maybe um, you were. I don't think we'd so. We still have not done the science. I know. I want to because I could be proven wrong. I'd love to be. I'd love to know. I would. It's too. something you hear. I mean, I think we talked about it on a different podcast, yeah. actually. And I even think. Let me add another one. But you hear the old. Oh man, yeah. that's a brush bust. Yeah. What 40, the hell makes a brush buster? Well, so prove it. A listener wrote in and said brush busting wasn't to inspire the bullet busting through the brush, but rather the hunter. And so the gun was a brush buster because it was this lightweight, handy, maneuverable rig. Gotcha. Yeah, so so you are the brush buster. Yeah, yeah. The cartridge is just completely adequate for. Yeah those types of shots yep. so i'm also going mm. back then to the uh, remington 760 the browning bpr which are pretty hard to find the browning pump rifle which is like the super deluxe version yeah those were fun guns well they had the uh what's the uh the, sh- the browning shot pump shotgun the bps, BPS yeah yeah and then so they, bpr yep for rifle um, so that chambered in 308 30 they, they, they must have quit making those yeah they did they're, they're kind of hard to come by I wonder when they quit making them. Quite some time ago. Did they look like the shotgun, just they with a rifle barrel? They looked exactly like a BAR, just without a charging handle on the bolt. They looked like a BAR. Yeah. I like it. They're a classic gun. And if you wanted the finest pump rifle in the United States, that's that's the one to get. Free-floated barrel? Yeah, yes. they shot good. So, but so do generally 760s, 7600s. Right. They all shoot pretty darn good, too. Yeah. I just would be curious. Like, you just always hear, like, oh, pump gun, auto loader. They're not as accurate as a bolt yeah. gun. Depends. But I think. I'm I saying think, you hear it. Yeah. I don't know. But then you look at any gun that's built for precision, it's always a bolt gun. Yep. I think one of those pump rifles or semi auto or, or lever gun. Mm-hmm. Let's not forget the BLR, which is a great gun. Now, I don't see enough of those come in the door. We had one in last week, last Friday. A gentleman came in with a, a BLR, uh, chambered in 308. Um, but something like that. Again, the idea is a rifle that we can get a rapid shot off, generally smaller in profile, faster to operate, quote mm-hmm. unquote. Um, you know, in a in an adequate center fire cartridge. I don't think we need to get into the Magnum level stuff at this, right? So, and I'd even say like a, a Marlin 1895 and, and 4570 would be great. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to dismiss the the pistol revolver cartridge crowd either. Um, you know, a, a, a lever gun and 44 Magnum mm-hmm. would be a great choice. They make a couple of bolt guns or had made a couple of bolt guns and 44 Magnum. Um, fine cartridge. That would, that would do just great. Um, I would personally probably pick one of the bottleneck center fires just just in case the opportunity for that shot down the logging road uh, if it had presented itself. Um, now, we move out of the big north woods. We get down here where we're at in, in south central Wisconsin. We've got this um, interesting mix of hardwoods. You've got a mix, yeah. yeah. Interesting mix of hardwoods and then large agricultural mm-hmm. properties. And we have, we have customers come in here, and we've experienced this as well, where you could have an opportunity at a shot identical to that that you would encounter in the Dakotas, mm-hmm. in Wyoming, Nebraska, et cetera. You, you could have hundreds and hundreds of yards. And now I think maybe I'm going to be looking at a bolt-action center fire rifle, mm-hmm. and I'm probably going to be looking at a flatter shooting cartridge, and I'm going to start at 243, and I'm going to end at, you know, probably 300 wind mag, realistically. It's a lot of gun for a, a whitetail, but 
you know, if, if we do have distance to contend with, it's not a bad choice. A lot, of, lot to shoot, but not a bad choice. Um, I like the bolt for the, the potential for better accuracy. Generally, we'll observe a better trigger, um, which is important. Um, and you can get it in a bunch of great cartridges. That, that'll do the trick. 6.5 Creedmoor, 30-06, 308, 708, 270, 25-06. All fantastic. Um, move west of the Missouri River. I make no differential in my, my choice for this. It's going to be about the same. Yep. If anything, I'm going to start looking at a lighter weight rifle because I'm probably going to be doing a lot of tootling around, mm -hmm. potentially in some altitude. And so with that, though, I'll caveat it and be like, okay, if it's going to be a lighter weight rifle, it's going to be harder to shoot mm -hmm. because I'm going to be um, subjected to higher levels of recoil. It's like a yin, it's like a yin and yang there because yep. you don't want to carry it, yep. but that heavier rifle sure is nice when you go to pull the trigger. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, the rifle that you're working with right now that you're going to be heading to Montana, beautiful rifle, mm -hmm. shooting exceptionally well, not an easy gun to shoot because of its form factor. It's just, it's a light, like, I love it. I, yeah. I, I love lightweight, quotation mark, mountain rifles. Mm -hmm. um, it's, uh, so that gun is a Weatherby uh, Backcountry 2.0, uh, the, uh, the steel barrel, fluted steel barrel, in 6.5 RPM, which, when you look at some numbers, it's quite an impressive cartridge. I, I've remarked that I think that that would be the, for everything I hunt, caliber cartridge and mm -hmm. rifle package but it's unforgiving the gun seems to be shooting quite well right now yes i'm gonna shoot it later today yep. i'm going down to the um to the outdoor range actually after this podcast yes and going to uh proof out some uh some dope on there see see uh if my numbers are accurate ryan uh that's this guy here oh there we go those are some this is some uh fmj 308s which actually is what i thought i, I there we go I thought that was, I thought that's what I was gonna pick about until I got here. Then I was like, ah, what if I get those longer shots, Ryan? I want, yeah. the, I want the wind. I want the uh, less susceptible to wind. But yeah, six five Weatherby RPM. This is the Weatherby Select Plus, Ryan. Shoot the Barnes one twenty seven grain LRX box posted muzzle velocity of thirty two twenty five. Mm hmm. That's new. Pretty seat. fast. That's that's cooking. It's a snappy little cartridge, though. It is. It's put handful. the brake on it. I don't yeah. like brakes. We put the brake on it. I'm glad you did. Yeah. You almost made me take it off. Did I mention that about the 6.5 Creedmoor, though? You don't have to brake it. You don't have to but brake it. But if you it. did. If you did, it's going to be even more mild. Yep. But I just, you know, like, I am very guilty of being, I don't have time to put my hair in protection and, and bang. Like, ah, uh, yeah, that's where the ringing comes from. Um, So that's what's nice about this is you don't have to break it and endure maybe potentially a little bit more uh, a little more noise, but we put we threw the brake on the uh, six five RPM, but that's a light rifle five five and a half pounds I think yeah. is what that thing's coming in at. Don't trim, trim, very trim. But, but I'm 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 you make a good point, right? So lighter lighter weight rifle. I'm going to be tootling around some altitude, some rough train. I want a rifle that's super easy to carry. I'm going to be a little bit more selective in cartridge because I don't also want to knock my teeth out when I'm trying to get zeroed. Mm -hmm. and it's going to be a harder rifle to shoot, and I'm going to be dissuaded from using it. I'm going to pick probably a short-action cartridge, or in the case of this gun, because there isn't really a, quote, short action in the Weatherby 6 lug. It's a standard action. Um, something that's going to fit in there without being atrocious. Um, caveat, 300 Wisdom. That's a that's a pretty hard recoiling gun in a really lightweight. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. But I'm going to pick a lighter cartridge on the recoil side, a pretty snappy cartridge that I can take a longer shot. And like my my go-to for that is either that that 6.5 Creedmoor that I was hunting with last week, or like my Kimber in 308. I I weight down on the bullet. I'm I'm shooting a 130, pretty darn fast. 3140, 3150 is what I'm getting out of that gun. So I've got this nice trajectory that I can take these potentially longer shots with, and I'm still impacting with enough payload. To, to be ethical and wait, thirty-one fifty out of which one? Three hundred eight. Oh, I do three hundred eight. Yeah. Wait, what? One hundred and thirty grain. And those are hand loads. No, factory ammo. What's the BC on that bullet? Point three five zero. Oh, atrocious. And yet somehow, <laughs> so efficient. And and by that I mean like in its uh, ability to work on target. You know, Aaron killed a bison with that. Folded it like a $5 tent. I digress. We move into the American Southwest. 
Mark, you've hunted cows, deer, coos, deer. Mm-hmm. You've done it a couple times. A couple times. Two you, times with the rifle and one yep. time with the bow. You and James hunted with a bow. Mm-hmm. And, of course, you got into archery distance on, on several deer. Oh, my gosh. I, I had one. Now we're now going back into, you know, just story time. But yep. we had, dude, it was going to be, I had probably a shorter, shoulder length window or shoulder width window yep. in the Ocotillo if that's how you say it, uh, for like 50 yards. Oh, yeah. And this this doe came through at like 30. She had a buck, like you could just barely see him flickering above her in the brush, you know, but he was following her. And uh, like I had tension on the bowstring because I knew the second oh, I gosh. saw his nose, I was going to have to draw, get the pin on him, hopefully get him to stop, maybe stops naturally in that gap, whatever. And, uh, let it rip at 30 yards and she got down the doe got downwind and blew just as he was about to get in that gap yeah. and then then she came back through took the whole thing yeah um that was a heartbreaker i was like oh my gosh i'm gonna i'm, I'm you know of course i would have had to make the shot but i was like i've got a legitimate opportunity to kill a koozie with my bow here yeah, that'd be cool but smaller target the smallest Huntable whitetail subspecies, I believe, in North America. Less margin for error. Yeah, they're they're a little critter. Um, a lot of times, and and you can uh, attest to this, potentially longer shot opportunity and potentially a more technical shot opportunity, if you have one. I'm probably going to pick a rifle that's a little more aptly suited for that kind of shooting. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. You know, something that that might not be the the old turn bolt that I was using up north. If not that you couldn't, but yeah. I, w- I want something stable. I want something highly accurate. And if I do have to thread a needle like you de- you described there, and I'm from the cows deer son or uh, cow deer cows, what am I trying to say? Coos deer. deer. Call them. Let's call them the, what they are. From the hunters that I've spoken with that do a lot of shooting um, down there on them, um, that shot that you just described, threading one through the Ocotillo, isn't out of the oh, question. That's a real thing. Rifle. Yeah. Yeah, you think it's like, oh, it's desert, it's wide open. It's like, eh. There's a lot of stuff down there. There's a lot, a lot of, of stuff that can get in the way. Choya, Ocotillo, Mesquite, Griso, Bush, all that stuff. But, you know, you want a rifle that's that's highly accurate, controllable, mm-hmm. and and then potentially one that could bring you to some distance because you may that may be your opportunity for it, right? And so I'm I'm looking back at a cartridge like the 6.5 Creedmoor. I'm looking back at a cartridge like the 6.5 RPM, 25-odd-6, um, 270 can't believe i said it um the short mags are, are becoming appealing to me even things like 257 weatherby the ackley's any of these faster flatter shooting cartridges oh six eight western there's a good one forgot we had that box on the table you know now i am putting a precedence on accuracy and and payload and um you know that long range precision now things like most coefficient may may go up a little bit in my my ranking but i've never done it i really should i should do that hunt the Cooster hunt? Yeah. Yeah, you should. Yeah, this is uh, pushing a... It should be a 160. Five. 160, a 165 grain, ABLR. Mm-hmm. Acubon long range. A 165 grain coming out at 2970. That is... That's not bad. Nope. That's it's actually it's about exactly the same load that my 280 Ackley can do, only that one's got a probably better realized BC than my, my 280 AI does with the similar bullet 168 grain ABLR. Mm-hmm. That's got a BC of uh, a G1 BC of 620. Yep. Box posted. Yep. Hmm. It's in the name though, 68 Western. That's what it's for. Yep. As we've, you know, begun extending our effective range, which I can say with certainty, oh, I do like the way that looks. It's a handsome cartridge. Reminds me of the 300 Wisdom. That's why I like it. It's similar. Um, there are definitely critters, some very memorable and important critters slash good hunts, great memories that I never. I, I when I started hunting, like in my first years of hunting, e- even into uh, I'd say what I'd call like uh, my midlife of hunting, Ryan, uh, and I'd say you know before dialing became like a real like more of a mainstream thing like back in the days which really isn't even that long ago when once i got a good zero on my rifle uh no touchy yep like 
like black magic. Do not touch my turret. Yep. Whatever. Um, I wouldn't have dreamt of taking some of the shots that I've taken, mm-hmm. you know, nowadays. You know, like 400 yards, eh, we better get closer. Yep. You know what I mean? Now 400 yards is very realistic. Yep. And I've shot some stuff beyond that, too. Yep. With confidence, yep. right? Um, where cartridges like the 6.8 Western come into play. But four deer, four whitetails, I'm still, I'm, I'm going to come full circle. I'm going to say the 6.5 Creed more. You know, there. I, and I don't think you're wrong. Have you changed your mind? I haven't. I really haven't. It's hard for me to not pick a thirty cal. It's, but there again, like I said, when when I made that statement, I kind of just made it just because I had to come up with a. I thought you were going to say three hundred eight. I mean, I thought about it, but I thought you were going to say three hundred eight, so I said thirty out six. I partially didn't say three hundred eight because I thought you were going to say three hundred eight. Oh boy! See what we did there? Did we have we settled on the three hundred eight? Fine cartridge. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm sticking with this. I'm okay. I like everything. I would say I like the 308 better than the 65 Creed. However, for long range performance, wind drift, those things, that's where I trend towards the 65 and then I go back to my earlier argument. I think it's going to do everything that the 308 does pretty much for yeah. whitetails. And I'll say this, Ryan, maybe I'll end my personal argument on this. Like I feel like Look at the three cartridges. Th- this, look at the three cartridges we've talked about mainly yeah. today. We've talked about a lot of cartridges, even though we're trying to pick one. Uh, we talked the thirty out six. Yep. Right. Now we're talking about the three hundred eight. And they should be interchangeable, though. Well, co- oh, time out, though. Okay. I'm gonna. I'm. I'm getting somewhere here. Okay. Jeez. Talked about the thirty out six, and then you know the three hundred eight. I picked the six five Creed more. Right. Uh, the three hundred eight is kind of. In between mm-hmm. those two, but we're arguably, it's like what in some ways replaced the thirty out six. Didn't n- not in the hunting realm, but like you know the three hundred eight was again arguably the slated, the slated replacement, the slated yeah, replacement yeah. for the out six. Yep. Ne- very popular cartridge, yeah, incredibly capable, mm-hmm. great at just about everything under the sun. Two world wars. Now <laughs> we have the six five Creedmoor. Which is eating up. That's it's like yeah. you went from the Ot six to the three hundred eight yeah. to the six five Creed. I feel like that the six five Creed is the next evolution of those two cartridges for deer sized game. I'll take it. I'll take in it. In the I like how you did that. When you brought that all together like that, that was nice. That's that what I good. got. I mark that is one of the most astute things I've heard. I've heard you say it was really good. Surprised you. Here I was just going with the old 1906 Springfield. It would never work. I know it. It's, well, it's like 7 millimeter Remington Magnum. You'll never hear me say that. I love the hot sex. Um, that's what I got. That's what I got, you know? Here Excellent. here I've, uh, you know, here I've, you know, uh, said, oh, you know, the ultimate deer cartridge essentially is the, uh, or whitetail cartridge is the, uh, uh, six five Creed, which I think that's deer. You know, you can deer size game. Um, and here I'm heading out on a hunt with my fancy new uh, six five RPM, which I think is really cool. I'm looking forward to your your results. I can't wait to hopefully tell you all about a uh, raving success. Excellent. What's your next hunt? Mule deer. Have not decided what I was going to take yet. <laughs> TBD. Yeah, you got to be leaning somewhere. You got one that just worked. Yeah, I'm, so I'm. It on, just worked. I'm, I'm. I'm there. I I loaded a bunch of ammo for it last year. I fired one round. Um, it worked. I'll probably take it. I got some rifles I haven't shown. And that yet. is the six point five Creed. Yeah. I've got some rifles I haven't shown any love to in a while. So we'll see. Rifles are just fun. Cartridges are fun. Yeah, it's fun to talk about them. Mm-hmm. It's fun to it's fun to think about them. Look over the numbers. Look over the hunt that you're going on. Mm-hmm. What you think you might anticipate. Try something new just for the sake of curiosity. Yep. That's why this is all fun. That's why we got a lot of them. I guess I don't know. Yeah, we can't leave well enough alone. No, nope, you can't. And you know what? The best part is about that. You we, in this case, I don't know that we can define well enough. No. Which is great. Fantastic. Tune in for round two when we spin in circles again. <laughs> Excellent. You got, you got anything else, Ryan? 
Just pick a really good bullet. Pick a good bullet. Match match your bullet. What that bullet's supposed to do to to what you're doing. If you want to go shoot long range steel, shoot a bullet that's optimized for that. You want to shoot things with heartbeats and bones, shoot a bullet that's optimized for that. Hashtag agree. All right, everybody. That wraps up Ryan and I's discussion on the ultimate whitetail cartridge to the end all be all. Comment if you agree. Comment if you disagree, but be nice, please. I did throw that slide in on 7 Rem Mag. Well, and I picked the 6.5 Creedmoor, which is everybody's okay. favorite cartridge to hate. Be you know curious. what? Oh, time out. You know what? I'm going to add something to it. All right. I think sometimes that people who hate on the 6.5 Creedmoor are mad because they actually loved the 6.5 Creedmoor when it was more obscure and then it got really popular, and then all of a sudden it wasn't cool anymore. I wanted to say something about the I think there are secret 6.5 Creedmoor lovers out there. Yeah, I agree. And they're the ones. That could be. Commenting <laughs> that could negatively. Be. All right. I'm, I'm good. Thanks, everybody, for listening. That's Let us know yeah. what is, in your opinion, that's all these things are, the ultimate whitetail deer I want to hear oh. ge- geographical location. And firearm used. Yes, all three. Yeah. And bullet. Yes. Tell us what bullet you're using. We literally want to know. I do. All right, everybody. Thanks for listening. We'll catch you on the next one. See ya. There you have it, folks. Thank you very much for listening. As usual, give this video a like if you liked it. Comment something below and give us a subscribe to the Vortex Nation podcast channel. It would mean a lot to us. Also, why don't you give us a follow over on Instagram while you're at it, at Vortex Nation Podcast. We'd love to hear from you over there, and we'll keep you updated with all kinds of cool photos and videos from our adventures that we do here. Otherwise, we will see you on the next one. Thank you again. Happy hunting and shooting, everybody. Have a good one.